So now in this video, we're using a single knot gate here, and we wired it as an A-stable uh, multi-vibrator. These uh, integrated circuits are uh, really easy to shock and damage, so I'm going to make sure I discharge myself before I touch anything. Um, but in case, it's an A-stable uh, multi-vibrator, but uh, we wired it to flash LEDs. It's pretty simple. So we have... Uh, First off, you got to power the integrated circuit, positive supply up there, negative supply up there. Uh, we're using 5 volts, which is good for this. All the inputs of the NOT gates that we are not using, there's 6 in there. It's a uh, hex uh, Schmidt trigger inverter. Right there, it's Schmidt trigger because uh, the output is either high or low, even as the input voltage uh, slowly changes. There is a middle ground hysteresis, though, um, but uh, for the most part, when uh, the input's high, output's low, when the input is low, output's high, but uh, once you go high enough to go high, then you gotta go down a little bit more to go low, and then you gotta go up a little bit higher to go high. That's the Schmidt trigger effect uh, right there, but it jumps right from high to low as far as the output is concerned. So the output is never in kind of an iffy region. The input is either high or low because you have to overcome a middle ground region before you switch from one to the other. Uh, hopefully that makes sense, but in any case, uh, when the capacitor, let's just say, charges enough, um, that's a high enough voltage, output is low. Then you can see that uh, we got a connection to ground uh, right there. And the capacitor just charges through that uh, resistor until its voltage is low enough to set the output high. And then again, the output's high, so it starts charging the capacitor. And that's how this process goes. Pretty simple right there. But uh, we can get an oscillator or a multivibrator, whichever... Uh, a stable multi vibrator, whatever uh, you want to call it. So I'm using number four out of six on here. You don't have to use four, even if the schematic uh, says to use four. Um, you know, it's just uh, probably you would see like one out of six, two out of six, three out of six, if there's three that you're using. Um, but since I'm using number four there, I just wanted to note it there. Uh, but you don't have to use that one. Any of these other ones will work just fine. And of course, we don't want to leave the uh, inputs floating. We want to give them a voltage because they cause oscillations with, which cause problems if uh, you just leave the input floating. So you can go either positive supply or negative supply. You could use a resistor too. Um, but in uh, any case, you set a voltage at the input that locks the output in place. You don't need to connect the output to anything. You definitely want to load. You don't want to put the output to a supply voltage um, ever. Now, um, we have, uh, you know, the LEDs flashing. I do this a lot in my circuits. Um, so a blue LED you can see comes from the positive supply, that 1K resistor to the positive supply. Blue LEDs are brighter than red LEDs. So we got more current going, or less current going through the blue LED so that it won't overpower the red LED. More current through the red LED so that it'll try to be as bright as the blue one. But in any case, when the output is low, that's when the blue LED lights up. You can see that path there. And then out uh, the red LED, it lights up when the output is high. And we already explained that it's flipping back and forth between high and low because uh, the uh, output wants to be the opposite of the input. But when you got feedback, that pulls the uh, input in the direction of the output. And once it overcomes that uh, hysteresis, because it's a Schmidt trigger, then it flips uh, states. This gets high enough where that gets low, and then this discharges until this gets low enough that that flips high, as I mentioned before, but I thought I'd mention again. That's the main principle for this. Um, the rest, I uh, just kind of add to it uh, for visual effect. And uh, yeah, there's the true table. Um, when it comes to integrated circuits, uh, no matter what the circuitry is, if you go to the schematic diagram or whatever, you'll probably find a true table. It'll tell you what the output will do um, when uh, the inputs have uh, different uh, states and stuff. Um, so that's important uh, to be aware of. Um, so this one's pretty simple though. So we could uh, extend the timing either by doing a larger capacitor or a larger uh, value resistor um, or both, you know, or we could shorten the time by using either a shorter or smaller value uh, capacitor or a smaller value resistor or both even. Um, and uh, so you can fine tune this um, by going larger and smaller with uh, one or the other. When it comes to the timing, there's probably formulas out there too that you could uh, come across. There may be online calculators. Whenever uh, you hear that there's a formula, you can probably just do a Google search for that formula. Just uh, 
type in that formula's name in the Google search plus calculator and it'll probably have something where you just enter numbers you know maybe you put the timing you want and then whatever capacitor you got and it will tell you what resistor you need and um, that should work out well I do that uh, you know here and there so but uh, most of the time I just kind of grab a larger or smaller uh, value and uh, or actually it's that one up there um, I just grab like a larger or smaller one that I think might work see how that's going and if I need slightly larger I use slightly larger or slightly smaller I use slightly smaller and so on um, so in any case went on long enough thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video